budget constraints, um, students who don't have uh, access, uh, rather there's not enough technology for everyone. And so how do we, how do we handle that? Um, something we'll talk about today. Um, staff technology and aptitude is a big concern because you may not know, uh, or rather many members of your staff may not be aware of the programming language as your system's needed sort of move computer science ahead um, as a curriculum or as a part of your culture in a school building. And then lastly, matching uh, tech to your curriculum. So you have technology available in your school, that's fantastic, how is it actually being used? Um, <coughs> let's take a look at the first thing. Questions that you should be asking yourself. And I should preface this by saying that uh, when the presentation is over today, I'll make sure that the folks at Ignite STEM and myself, we build a community. Um, I share this with you, and if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, a little bit less, but once the presentation's over, please. Um, so questions that we ask are, have I really taken a look at what I have in my building? Um, when I first came in as AP of tech at HSCS, I was walking into a building that had 3,000 devices. And I didn't know what those 3,000 devices were. I had to do a very thorough audit of what was available because of the 3,000 devices, it turns out that over 1,500 of them were completely obsolete. And it created a new conversation with myself and my administration. Um, what are we gonna do to make it so that what we have in the building is actually in use? Um, again, how are we maximizing our hardware? And what are we doing to work with people to make sure that they're getting something greater uh, out of what we can offer? So, a simple idea. Now, uh, just a quick show of hands, who uses laptops as part of their instructional, uh, instructional materials and methods? Right, everybody does. Uh, laptops are not disappearing, but as far as their use and utility, uh, they're getting old fast. So we know that there's about a three to four year turnover until technology becomes obsolete, which is tough for us because we're spending so much money to make sure that we stay updated. So here's something that on us. We had three uh, laptop carts of um, these Dells. And these Dells were old. Uh, I'll show you some photos in a second of, the, of what we got and what we were working with. Um, so I had my uh, technology community specialist uh, take these old Dells that had maximum three gigs of RAM and it took forever to start up. And we went, we installed Chrome OS. And for those of you who work with Chromebooks in your schools, yes, they pose problems. And that's related to bandwidth and related to how they tether to wireless access points. And that's a discussion for another day. But what they do is they start up in five seconds. So you take that obsolete laptop that takes forever to open up, that kills instructional time. Instead, you modify it and install an operating system that just makes sense. Now, could you spend money to buy new laptops? Of course you could. Um, but if you can take a look at the numbers here, and this is just assuming it's a class set. I'm going by New York City high school maximum classroom numbers, by the way, of 34 students. New Chromebooks are three, a little over 300. Um, Lenovo's are a little bit more. And you realize that you could be saving thousands and thousands of dollars per laptop card if you just find a way to take this, which is ancient and you convert it to a Chromebook. It's that simple. The nice, one of the advantages of uh, this Chromebook conversion is that you can also add these into the school network. Uh, you can't really do that with older hard drive based laptops and so it becomes a matter of accountability as well. Um, just safety and security thing which is important for any DOE administrator. I asked a couple people when they first came in, uh, how many people work for the DOE within the city? Just a quick show of hands, only a few. And everyone else is from outside of the city? Fantastic, thank you so much for coming. I work in the city, but not important. Got it, so a charter school or? Yeah, charter school. Understood, that's wonderful as well. So thank you for coming today. Um, part of the concern is community resources. Students don't know what they have available to them. And so, in addition to taking an in-building audit, our responsibility is to take a look at the surrounding community and make a determination. What is actually available to students when they leave the building? Um, and you can also minimize that to the building itself first. What do, who do we have in the building that's actually capable of teaching our students? Have another quick show of hands. I always like to do these uh, sort of informal uh, check for 
check for understandings or assessments. In this room, who has audited the technology capacity of their staff? You might say, like, well, what do you mean? I mean, do you know what programming languages and what hardware capability your teachers, your administrators, and your students have? Many uh, folks have a tremendous wealth of experience and resources that they're not taking full advantage of. So, uh, as a form of practice, one thing I strongly recommend if you have not already, is find a way, and we'll talk about this as a group, find a way to have those conversations with everyone on the staff. Because you may have technology teachers that you didn't know about. Um, moving ahead. Okay. So, let's talk more about obsolete hardware. We just switched out all the CPUs in my building because most were about five to ten years old. And the processing power was limited, and there were issues with uh, not getting uh, services for repairs. Because you know many of these devices are way past their prime, and they are just not going to be insured by companies that provide a uh, care plan. So, what do we do? We take the obsolete hardware and we wreck it. We demolish it piece by piece. Because many students, although they have an understanding of programming languages, do not have an understanding of hardware systems. So our students who we have uh, coming in during their lunch hours, after school, um, and sometimes during their community service hours, which our school uses as an advisory, um, they learn about the parts of the CPU tower. Quite simple. They take it apart, they label it, they work in teams uh, to identify what's relevant, what's not relevant. For example, we'll hear taking out an optical drive. Soon, optical drives will be a thing of the past. In many cases, they already are. Um, and then what do we do? As part of our tech team at the school, you can call it whatever you want. Other students put it back together. And for them, it's a great learning experience. For example, um, Joey's holding up a three and a half inch floppy. Uh, that may be very familiar to some of you. To others, what is that? Uh, my students who are, who have been what, born in the year 2000 and after, respectively, have never seen this before. It's very, very novel. And it informs their understanding of how data is stored um, and how systems uh, evolve to fit contemporary needs. So another thing that we've been doing, projectors. Every school has old projectors. I'm certain of it. Every school I've visited has old projectors. Uh, because most projectors we have are either integrated into uh, smart board use. I guess Columbia is a little behind the curve, but I'm sure they're working on it. Um, most projectors are fully integrated. Or, or now, we're actually moving away from projectors because they break so easily, and it's backlit uh, LCDs, which we're seeing in a lot of schools. So I've got about 25 old Epsons. What do I do with them? Well, first off, we have to keep in mind that um, Projection media, whoop, sorry, focus there. There we go. Uh, projection media is not uh, not just a gimmick. It's a big part of how marketing works right now um, in terms of projection mapping. If you're not 100% familiar with it, I'll actually uh, show you, there we go, what I'm talking about. Special events, marketing, um, and art is beginning to incorporate projection as opposed to being stuck within traditional spaces. The canvas can be anything, and art classes may not be taking full advantage. So, let me get back to the Prezi real quick. Sorry, sorry. Go, go, and here we are. So, how are we using that at HSCS? Well, we're beginning to work on the basics of projection mapping in our art classes. But another concept we had was using them simply to create silhouettes, integrating old technology into curriculums in which they didn't normally belong to. Why should your students in art class just be painting self-portraits in the classic sense, or working on horizons and 2D drawing in the classic sense? Why are they not making it a tactile experience? Why are they not working collaboratively to increase the, uh, the work products that they have? Because a big part of our focus 
is what actual tangible student outcomes can we produce. So let's, I'm going to shift gears uh, for a second and actually move on to another way that we repurpose tech. Does anyone in this room have an old cell phone that they have not thrown away? Right. What are you doing with it? I don't mean that's kind of semi a real question. I use that as a joke in my classroom, so I have a, like, uh, I think it was developed in Niantic Actors, so this is like a 2001 wow. <coughs> 2 cell phone, something like that, so I have a post-it note that says iPhone 12 on it. <laughs> I keep it out for my students to see, because my students, like you said, were born after 2000, have no concept what a phone looked like, like sure. that, so I just use it as a joke. <laughs> so the Nokia brick is famous. It was an indestructible phone, right? And the Bell Atlantic, same story. Um, you could drop it from a couple floors up and it would somehow survive. Uh, that obviously, that's not the case for today's smart technology. But the reason why I bring that up is because those phones are a source of energy and they're a computer, right? It's important to remind all students what a computer is and have that CS discussion. I, um, I spoke with a gentleman the other day who uh, does CS reporting and he gave me this kind of crazy idea, which is that in, inside every building, there is uh, those gas meters, right? You measure them, it's like how much uh, gas you use. Inside each of those gas meters is uh, a chip, uh, a small motherboard with about as much, a CPU with about as much computing power as the average cell phone. Do they use that? No, they don't, they're just there. And so what if we were able to harness all of the computers onto the same network inside technology, hardware specifically, that doesn't classically use them? You could turn the entire um, uh, gas meter system into one of the largest supercomputers in the country, if you had the means. It's about taking something that we may not see and converting it into something that we can absolutely use. So in line with that um, little chat about cell phones, I want to bring to you the idea that many CS programs have a robotics component. Um, we use Exploring Computer Science in my school. It's a code.org partnership, Microsoft. Uh, works with our kids and uh, our teachers. And I teach the class as well. Um, it's very hands on But robotics parts are very expensive. I don't know, as administrators uh, or uh, district purchasers, if you've had to buy robotics parts, but uh, this, I think it's called the, uh, the N NSX, or NXT, sorry. The NXT will run about 170, and that's for a brand new, and that's just the processor, right? So, instead, you bring in your old cell phone, or better yet, you have a drive at your school. Have the parents of your students bring in their old cell phones, because if you have yours, it's a pretty safe bet they have theirs too. It's strange that people aren't taking advantage of recycling programs, but your school can be a recycling program. And if you think about the amount of money that it's gonna cost for a class of 34 students to build a robot, well, you can spend $12,000 which is probably not gonna work for your principal, unless you're the principal, in which case, by all means, I'll leave it up to you. Or you can buy something from Selba, a whole different company. $30 per package. I don't represent Selba, I'm not uh, one of their constituents, but I found that their products work in our school. And all you have to do is you literally just load in this program. You build it up, Classic Robotics, it's 3D cut uh, cardboard parts with a small Arduino, um, servo, servo motors to, to make it move. Here's what you get. You may not be able to hear, but he's just using a Telnet program. Students can be able to put these together within a couple weeks. Do they need a fancy Lego robotics uh, kit? No, the principles of robotics can be contained in the simplest possible format. So why would you waste tons of school money trying to make things look real pretty when the skills that are embodied within the task, the project-based learning that has been discussed before, can be done in a very cost-effective manner? So we see here is a series of different commands. Um, there we go. And we'll just move right ahead from there. So, yes.
Yeah, I'll, I'm going to send, sorry, I, uh, everyone will get this. Um, and if there's any questions you have about what you've seen here, I'd be more than happy to answer. Um, so I know time is a factor, and I want to make sure that the next presenter presents and the time next questions. Um, so this is just the beginning. I should really, really reinforce the point that we haven't done at HSCS the kind of complete inventory that we need to of every last piece of technology. We're just beginning to make the steps and beginning to repurpose for basic classroom use. But it would be a considerable waste of resources if you didn't take the time, or at least have someone within the school community assess how are we using tech. And really, if you don't have a good answer to that question, and a good thorough answer to that question, then that means there's much more to explore in your building. So, any questions? Um, heard of, but not explored. So, so uh, some schools in, in New Jersey have used it and it's been very effective in them in taking old computers that are networked and turning them into uh, to, you know, virtualization, turning them into modern computers. Right. So there are options for old equipment. You don't want to go the, uh, the route with uh, homeworks. And other, other things, uh, are you familiar with the levels of technology, uh, levels of teaching innovation loading? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a free, it's a free uh, uh, offering to uh, test not just the skill level of your teachers, but their skill level of integrating technology into their curriculum. So that, that's a free tool, <coughs> literally, if you can find it, that would enable you to judge your, your teacher's efforts. Got it. Okay. What's that name again? LOTI, L-O-T-I, Levels of uh, Teaching Innovation. It used to be Levels of Technology Integration. The acronym is true. We've used it for 10 years, it's great. Okay, absolutely. So one thing you know that our school is now looking into, by the way, is um, taking a lot of our old uh, PC towers and turning them into servers. Because we have the capability to do that, the only problem is then, if your school has a server system which it manages in-house, you have to have uh, a specialist on site who can really troubleshoot any issues that come up. And again, you're working on older technology as it is, so no one's going to ensure your homemade server sort of on your own. Uh, when you break away from uh, DO, in, at least in New York City, you break away from the proxy server that they use and, um, and the support from the central office, uh, it's not really smiled upon. But at the same time, innovation is rewarded. So you have to strike the balance and make sure that your, um, your principal or your district administrators understand what you're trying to do with technology. Any other questions for you? Thank you so much. Thank you.